Hi, this is Craig Stevens again, and we're talking about structural dilemmas in this podcast. To find this on the website, go to westbrookstevens.com forward slash organizational dot htm. Now, I'm looking below the camera because that's where the slides are, and you'll if you go to the website, you will see the slides. So directly below this podcast is what I'm talking about. The next structural dilemma on our list to talk about is gaps versus overlap. And if you go to figure SD4, you will see a gaps versus overlap slide. Now, I put together five different um, groupings of maybe where you'll find gaps and overlaps. The first one is business. And I, I'm putting that in all those things that make the business go, all the administrative stuff, all the... Uh, um, or, um, uh, related to actually tracking where the dollars go, uh, actually making the offices work, and, and, and all the business related stuff, the, the money, tracking the money and tracking the progress and tracking the performance. Now, on the other, another block is the organizational issues, and that I'm, I'm looking at leadership and how things fit together organizationally, chain of command, those type of things. And in operations, that's the work that actually, the people who are doing the work actually getting the work done. And then technology and systems, that's maybe IT uh, systems would relate to the business or relate to the operations, or maybe automation would relate to, op op to the operations. And so those are all related business. Then I put another uh, group called customer needs. Now, when you think about gaps and overlaps, first thing I think about is the customer. Are we creating, uh, are we giving the customer what we want to give the customer with enough quality, enough productivity, make a profit? And to, to delight the customer. Now, here's the thing to remember. We're going to have, the customer's needs are going to have gaps in it that we're just not going to fill because our niche will not allow us to be all things to all people. And I'll give you an example of that. If we're in the business of painting cars and someone wants their fender repaired, it may be outside our scope of work. So therefore, we don't do that. We create, the customer has a gap but what we have to do is have the core competencies and expertise to give the best paint job possible. Now, if we we're just doing detailing, we wouldn't do paint. So we're creating, the customer still has needs and gaps that we don't fulfill, but at the same time, uh, we're doing what we do well. Now, that's one side to look at it. Now, the other side is within our organization, those things we decide to do well, we don't have resources to even do all of that well at times. So we have natural gaps that, that will, be, will happen and natural overlaps that will happen. What we have to do is make sure those core, critical, sensitive items related to what we decide to do well, our niche, we have to make sure that's covered, and maybe the less important things, maybe there will be gaps from time to time, depending on resources. So the first step, there's three bullets here, so let's talk about those three bullets on that slide. First is key responsibilities should be clearly defined. So we got to go about and figure out what are the key responsibilities and all those things we decide within our scope to do and our niche and what we want to be best in the world at. Now, if we heavily overlap the the process of those of those responsibilities and and the roles we overlap those roles and activities we cause waste we spend uh, too many people doing too much of the same and sometimes some of those people aren't working real hard because there's too much overlap so it could be waste could be conflict because people want to do good work, want to be in charge of good work and too many cooks spoil the soup. Have you ever heard that saying? Or too many chiefs it, it, there's not enough Indians, you've heard that. Um, so we can actually have so much overlap that there's confusion and there's unintended redundancy. So people do rework and work and rework and rework just to stay busy or they won't stay busy. Now, gaps causes other problems that, we, that, that are kind of obvious in some cases because we have, uh, we're, not, we're not doing everything we're supposed to do in order to satisfy com customers related to our niche. So that's internally. Now, if we go to the next slide, we have to balance between overuse 
and uh, underuse and overload, or overuse and underuse. Underuse and overload. Now, the picture that I have on slide SD5 shows a balancing weight machine. So we're looking at uh, this little seesaw, basically. And one side says oh, underuse, and the other side is overload. So both of them have problems. If you underuse somebody, underuse the, the, the resources you have, there's boredom. There's wasted time. There's um, people getting away of each other to try and find something to do and maybe hanging out at other people's offices. And then there's poor service. And you think, well, why should it be poor service? We're underusing this group of people. Well, people find other things to do. They may get on the phone and talk to their relatives or their boyfriend or girlfriend when they should be answering the phone for the customer, and you may have dropped calls. There, um, there could be, um, a, it could be that when, when the work comes in, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's, they let it fall through the cracks because they're not ready and they're not efficient at what they do. All right, now overload, it could relate to poor service too because you got so much to do, you cannot give the customer the, res the responsiveness that they need. You're overloaded. And then poor quality could result from that. Safety problems could can result from that. You can, be, you can burn out people and you can cause lots of conflict. If you're really tired, you're going to be more confrontational because you're over, say you're overloaded, you're really tired, you're going to be more confrontational. Can't get the work done, can't do it right, you feel bad about it. Now, I know some companies have used overload as a strategy to, to laying off people. And one large government, uh, pseudo-government utility at one time, I remember, used um, seven day a week uh, work weeks in 10 hour days, 10, 12 hour days. Now what was the purpose of that? They were trying to get people to quit so because they were so bogged down in regulations they couldn't lay people off. So they're trying to get people to quit. Now who do you think left first? It's not the people who couldn't find a job. It's not the people who who found ways to go around the system and, and, and be there a lot but not have a whole lot of, of, of uh, outcome or results from their time there. It was the superstars. Superstars have people, have recruiters calling up and wanting them, especially in the 21st century, wanting them to find other, find one and go to other places and do work other places. So what you're doing is you're getting rid of your superstars. Another thing, a study uh, several years ago, I remember a study, once, uh, several studies that said something like this. People work 40-hour work weeks. Now, you can have them there for 60 hours, you can have them there for 100 hours, you can have them there for, for 40 hours. But they're going to put in about 40 hours worth of good quality work that you don't have to rework. And, and, they're, and this is how that works. If, if you overload somebody, they're going to f do their own personal work, for example, run errands on company time, even if it's by phone. They're going to uh, get a little bit lazy at their work because they have so much to do, or they're there so often. They're kind of they're kind of tired of it. So what they're going to do is they're going to take shortcuts, and they're probably going to have a lot more rework. So if you count out all that up, it's the equivalent of getting 40 hours out of somebody for that work week. And so sometimes a lot of overtime doesn't help. It works short term, but it won't work long term. Now we have to find a balance between underusing and overloading. We have to fully engage the employee first. Now you can tell an immature manager, let's stop there because we're running at the end of our podcast. This is Craig A. Stevens and we'll pick that up on the next podcast. Remember, go to westbrookstevens.com forward slash organizational dot htm. My name is Craig Stevens. You can reach me at Craig A. Stevens at westbrookstevens.com. See you soon.